Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you could join us. And welcome back if you're returning. So what we've been doing is going through this ECG coding reference guide, okay? And we're going one by one through each aspect, every code, to ensure that we understand what we are actually putting out there. So um, if you don't have access or you need the link, make sure you go to this link here, okay? It's at our website, which is www ekg.md okay and there you'll find this if you want to see our course there's that here and a number of other things but if you go to this reference guide here you can just simply put this URL in you'll put your email address in okay and then you'll click submit and then after submit check your email if you're a first-time user okay and then your email will have a link that you'll click on and from that link it'll confirm your email and you'll have access now, if you've already, you know, gone through this process, simply put your email in, click submit, and you'll bypass that whole thing. All right. And we are now going through part one, okay, almost near the end of part one. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at left atrial enlargement or the abnormality. Okay. So what you want to do is once you open the reference guide, click on this um, area and you'll see that it'll drop down and you'll see the codes that we're going through as well as examples that I continuously update. All right, so let's get started. So left atrial enlargement, okay? In this case, we want to, just like we did with right atrial enlargement, we are focusing on the P waves. So our P waves are what we'll focus on. Okay, so here's your normal complex. This is a P wave. This is an RS complex, which we signify as a QRS complex as general, and this is our T wave. So when we look at atrial abnormalities, we're simply looking here. Whether we're looking for sinus rhythm, we look at the P waves if it's present, or if we're looking for um, left or right atrial enlargement as well. Okay, so the P wave comes in handy when looking for underlying rhythm and then atrial abnormalities. Now the leads that you want to look at, at that are best for atrial abnormalities, okay, and we in our here uh, at Mayo Clinic, we have our rhythm strip that tends to put leads V1 and lead 2, and they're very helpful because I feel like the best leads to look for these abnormalities are lead 2 and V1, okay? And they're down here. I've placed them lead 2, V1, okay, V1, lead 2, okay? And these are two different rhythm strips from two different 12 lead ECGs that I've taken to show you examples of, okay? So what we want to do here is you can see that the criteria in the inferior lead, so similar to our right atrial enlargement, has inferior lead criteria, and then we have V1, okay? In the inferior leads, you want to see notched P waves, okay, that are at least 40 milliseconds between, and often above 110 milliseconds. So usually if it's, you know, around 120 milliseconds, we consider that prolonged. So in that lead, what you want to see is we drew that normal P wave, but in this, you'll see something like that looks like this, okay? It's not always as perfect as that, all right? And what do I mean? Well, there's notching here. So we said that there's a notched P wave. So imagine this is your whole, this whole thing is your P wave. There's notching here, and oops, here's a notch and a notch. And we're saying that the difference between these two highest uh, points is at least one small box or 40 milliseconds, okay? So that's at 40 milliseconds there. And the duration is at least 120 milliseconds, okay? So if it's at three boxes, okay, that's considered prolonged. So 120 milliseconds is usually that. And this is in the inferior leads, two, three, and AVF, okay? Best one I feel is lead two, so, but you can look in those leads as well. So that's what we see there. Okay, and then we look at V1. V1 is the other one. In V1, we're looking at, we can see biphasic P waves. So we saw that normal P wave. Sometimes you can see these biphasic P waves in V1, okay? And what you would want to see here is you'd be focusing on the terminal portion. So imagine you have this biphasic P wave, okay? And remember the initial portion represents right atrial and large, uh, depolarization, and this represents left atrial depolarization. Remember, the P wave altogether is atrial depolarization. So right atrial and left atrial depolarization in V1, that P wave. So that P wave, when we're looking for right atrial abnormalities, we look at the initial portion, but when we're looking for 
left atrial abnormalities, we look at the terminal portion. And what this is saying in this terminal portion of a biphasic P wave, it should be at least one millimeter deep. Okay, so meaning it should be deep this way, at least one small box. And then it should be at least 40 milliseconds wide, which is one small box. So 40 milliseconds or uh, one small box wide. So it's one by one pretty much. Okay, so one wide, one deep on the standard uh, 25 millis millimeter per second tracing, which we have here, uh, is what would be considered that. So if it's beyond that. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. And we can look at some examples down here. So notice here are our P waves. Okay, and if you were to look closely, you would see that they are at least one small box wide and one deep. Okay, all together. This patient did actually have left uh, atrial enlargement. <coughs> Another thing you can note is that in lead two of this patient's, okay, there's maybe some notching here. So look at, look at this P wave, little notching there, okay, about uh, 40 milliseconds or one small box, and just making about three small boxes wide. You can see that in other P waves. So that's one example, and then below we have another one, another patient. Here's lead V1, we said. Okay, so in V1, we're looking for this criteria here when it's one wide, one uh, deep. Okay, essentially, you know, what we're wanting is it for to, uh, it to be zero point, uh, let's see, is it four millimeters per second wide or so. Um, I believe that's the case, but Anyways, let's let's just uh, scratch that. I have to do the math, but anyways, what we look for one millimeter wide and one millimeter deep. So here's perfect examples of that. Look at how wide and deep these P waves are. Okay, especially that terminal portion, which is that negative portion here. Okay, a few millimeters wide and deep, and you can see that there. So, okay, so these are excellent examples of those P waves, okay? And again, you can see some notching maybe in these ones here, some of them. It's hard, it's not exact perfect notching, but you can see that there, there is some there. This patient did have severe left atrial enlargement. Now there's a few things that I need to mention when we talk about these atrial abnormalities. Just like right atrial enlargement, left atrial enlargement requires sinus rhythm to be present. So make sure that sinus rhythm is present before you go and say, someone with atrial flutter has some enlargement okay those flutterways may be too large we when they developed the criteria sinus rhythm was uh was something that they suggested had to be present before you know uh, utilizing these uh, criteria now some associated conditions include left atrial dilation or hypertrophy intraatrial conduction delay okay if someone has a stenotic uh, um, aortic valve uh, in some cases, you can have backup of pressure, left ventricular hypertrophy, anything that pretty much enlarges that left atrium, even mitral stenosis can cause it. So remember, when we look at the heart, if you imagine a four-chamber heart, this is your right atrium, this is your left atrium, your right ventricle and left ventricle, okay? So blood flows from the right atrium, left ventricle, from the right ventricle goes to the lungs, gets oxygenated, comes to the left side of the heart, from the left atrium to the left ventricle, and out our aortic valve, okay, to the aorta and so forth, to the body, and then eventually comes back to the right side of the heart. Now, the left atrium is what we're saying is getting enlarged here, so this left atrium. So you can imagine anything that causes a back of pressure, whether it's, a, you know, a big left ventricle, a stenotic aortic valve, a stenotic mitral valve, eventually these cause, over time, left atrial dilation. And you have to remember that left atrial enlargement is actually a substrate for atrial fibrillation. So a lot of patients that have it, if they have really big left atria, then this could be predisposing them to having and developing atrial fibrillation, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, okay? And remember that we look at the terminal portion of the P wave because if we draw our heart again, again, our right atrium here and left atrium, our conduction system, our sinus node sits, sits up here, okay? From there, it goes to our AV node, 
down to the right uh, bundle branch, left bundle branch that has an anterior and posterior fascicle, and then there's a Bachmann bundle. But notice that the majority of the impulses start here in sinus rhythm in the right atrium. So when we looked at right atrial problems, we looked at a peaking of the P waves and the initial portion of that uh, P wave, the biphasic one, in V1. And then after the right atrium depolarizes, then we have the left atrium depolarizing. And that's why we look at the terminal portion, the terminal portion of the uh, P wave in V1. So you get an increase in the depth and an increase in the width. Okay, so it's the terminal portion. And the same thing in the inferior leads, you're seeing an increase in that notching. So notice that you're having a, a width, more notching and an increase in the duration. Okay, so duration is common in both of them. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So again, in the inferior leads, you're looking for that M or P mitrale. So we didn't mention that, but this P mitrale, you can think of it, the M because of maybe mitral disease. So remember the mitral valve sits here, okay? Between the left atrium and the left ventricle. If this is stenotic, you can have an increase in that left atrial size. So P mitrale, that's one way you can remember it. Okay, that the mitral valve is often a culprit, as well as that M shaped of that P wave in the inferior leads. Okay, so that M shaped P wave. Uh, the other thing in V1, you're looking at the biphasic, the terminal portion of it, having at least one millimeter wide or 40 milliseconds deep. Um, okay, uh, so hopefully that makes sense there. Um, and let's see. What else? Well, we mentioned some associated conditions, left ventricular hypertrophy, atrial dilation, and hypertrophy. If there's any intraatrial conduction delay, you know, severe mitral stenosis, severe AS, aortic stenosis over time causes that backup of pressure into the left atrium and cause it enlarging, okay? So these are great examples here of these, okay? And remember the patient, this is the key thing, has to be in sinus rhythm. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available, so you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket, and it's really available on the go. Now, with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available 
I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.